Hi all, in this video we will go over how to determine the electric field due to a conducting sphere of radius r placed on a charge of minus q. So the problem is a charge of minus q is placed on a conducting sphere of radius r and we want to determine the E field inside and outside of the sphere. So the first thing we need to do is draw the situation. So we're going to have a sphere, radius r, and it's going to be a sphere. And there is going to be a total charge of minus q placed on this. So we're going to have uh, more or less a negative jelly of charge uh, spread evenly over the surface of this. So as you remember with the conductor, um, electric charge uniformly distributes on the surface. So we're going to have minus Q all over the surface of this. So we've drawn the sphere. We've drawn the charge. Now the next thing to do is to draw the electric field. So you'll remember that for negative charges, electric field lines come in and they end on negative charges. So we're going to have the E field coming in uh, like this. It's supposed to be perpendicular to the surface of the sphere at all points. And it's like this. And it's uniform in both angular directions. So we have the electric field. So this is going to be E. And we uh, can now pick a Gaussian surface. So uh, let's start with for r less than the radius of the sphere. We're going to solve for the E field. Now inside the sphere uh, there will be no charge. So if there is no charge enclosed um, then we won't have any electric flux. So we'll write down Gauss's law, E dot dA equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. So inside we won't have any charge enclosed. So this right hand side will just be equal to zero. Um, we will choose a Gaussian surface inside of this. So it's a smaller sphere that's in here. Um, so that um, will have some surface area, which will be equal to four pi r squared. And then it's going to be multiplied by the E field. So at any non-zero point of R, so this is uh, for any radius from zero to big R, the flux has to be equal to zero, and the only case that this can happen since the radius will go from zero to big R is for the E field to be equal to zero. So um, inside of here, um, the E field zero, and this is something that you know from conductors, the electric field inside a conductor is equal to zero. So now we can do the second part where we now draw a Gaussian surface outside. So it'll be a concentric sphere that encapsulates this uh, conducting sphere. Um, so now we will do solve for the E field. Um, for r greater than big R. So we'll come over here, we'll rewrite Gauss's law. So it's E dot dA. That's going to be equal to the charge enclosed over epsilon naught. So on the right side, the charge that we enclose is equal to minus Q over epsilon naught. And then over here, 
we chose a Gaussian surface such that the electric field is uh, the same value at any point on the surface. So we can pull that out of the integral. And then we just need to do the surface area, which is just going to be 4 pi r squared. And then we can solve for the magnitude, which is going to be minus q over uh, 4 pi epsilon naught over r squared. So at this point, what some people do is they like to say, oh, okay, um, the electric field is pointing in and the area vector is pointing out. That's a little hard to read. Let's see. I'm trying to come up with a bunch of color choices. Yeah, there we go. That's more legible. So this should be uh, a dot E, and there's 180 degrees. So if you were doing this as a pure uh, dot product, then you would have gotten a negative sign here, which I should have written, uh, so that in the end, the magnitude of the electric field is equal to Q over 4 pi epsilon naught over R squared. Now, the tricky, I wanted to go over this problem because it's a little bit tricky. So Gauss's law is very good for coming up with the magnitude of the electric field. However, if you do things sort of rote mechanically, you'll see that the electric field looks like this, and people might assume that it is uh, this quantity and that it's in the positive direction, but really, the electric field is in the negative r direction. So if we were to formally write down what the electric field is, it is the charge q over 4 pi epsilon naught over r squared, but it's in the minus r hat direction. And all that means, so the way in spherical coordinates that we define the radial direction is we start at r equals zero and positive which means you have a bigger radius. So that's the direction of positive r hat, whereas the electric field is pointing inward, so it has to be negative. All right, thank you very much.